When China was excluded from participating in the ISS program, it decided to build its own, and that became Tiangong, meaning Heavenly Palace. Despite being fully operational and hosting research since late 2022, Tiangong receives far less media attention than the ISS. As a result, while we have a clear picture of what life is like on the ISS, life for the Chinese crew aboard Tiangong has remained largely a mystery. But that's starting to change. As the ISS nears retirement, the veil of mystery surrounding Tiangong is lifting, revealing a space station unlike anything we've seen before. So with fewer resources, how can China build the most advanced outpost humanity has ever placed in orbit? Find out in today's episode of TechMap. You might already know that China's Tiangong Space Station came together in just 18 months, with about a dozen launches marking its main construction phase. Much like the International Space Station, Tiangong was built using a modular approach, with sections assembled while orbiting Earth. The first piece, the Tianhe Core Module, lifted off on April 29, 2021. After that came a series of crewed and uncrewed missions, leading to the addition of two lab modules. The first, Wentian, meaning Quest for the Heavens, launched on July 24, 2022, followed by Mengtian, or Dreaming of the Heavens, on October 31, 2022. Both modules docked automatically and were repositioned in orbit to form the station's final T-shaped layout. Each module was largely pre-assembled on Earth and engineered for automatic docking, minimizing the need for spacewalks or manual work in orbit. This method of sending up larger, ready-to-connect components saved enormous amounts of time. It's quite different from how the ISS was built, where astronauts had to manually connect even smallest pieces in space, wiring, pipes, and framework, one step at a time. You could think of the ISS as a massive space puzzle built by many nations, piece by piece, while Tiangong was more like snapping together large, ready-made sections in space. As a result, the ISS took far longer to complete up to 13 years, beginning its assembly in 1998 and requiring more than 30 launches. This wasn't just because of a different assembly method. Tiangong is also much smaller. It consists of three main modules, while the ISS is made up of 16, making it about five times larger overall. Despite that, the inside of Tiangong feels surprisingly open and spacious, with a clean, minimalist look. What's fascinating is that both stations share nearly the same module diameter, about 4.2 meters or 14 feet. But Tiangong's layout offers noticeably more usable space inside. That difference comes down to a few key design choices. The ISS modules tend to be shorter and have more connecting joints, which create narrow passageways throughout the structure. Tiangong, on the other hand, uses longer, more streamlined sections. For example, the Destiny Lab on the ISS, the main workspace for U.S. astronauts, is about 8.4 meters, or 28 feet long. In contrast, both the Wentian and Mengtian modules on Tiangong stretch to 18 meters, or roughly 59 feet each, making the Chinese station feel far more open and continuous inside. Secondly, the technology on Tiangong is far more modern, featuring fewer cables and less clutter, which allows everything to fit neatly into smaller spaces. Many of the station's systems connect wirelessly, avoiding the maze of wiring that runs throughout the ISS. A lot of the hardware is also hidden behind sleek white panels when not in use, giving Tiangong a clean, minimalist look that almost feels inspired by Apple's design philosophy. Another big difference is how the station's interior is organized. Tiangong is optimized for experiments and storage rather than living space. For instance, 
the Mengtian module alone offers about 32 cubic meters dedicated to research, complete with a special airlock that lets astronauts move equipment and samples in and out without depressurizing the whole cabin, making experiments much easier and safer. Because of that, Mengtian doesn't include sleeping quarters. By contrast, some areas of the ISS combine work and living space. Astronauts sleep in small pods built right into the lab modules, which takes up valuable room that could otherwise be used for equipment. Add in the older wiring systems and narrower passages from its piece-by-piece -piece construction, and the ISS naturally feels a bit more crowded than the sleek, open design of Tiangong. At this point, you might be wondering, where do Chinese astronauts, or Taikonauts, actually sleep? The answer lies inside the Tianhe core module. Each crew member has their own private sleeping space, roughly the size of a twin bed with some extra headroom. These bunks are noticeably larger and more comfortable than the compact sleeping pods found on the ISS. The quarters aboard Tiangong are designed to feel cozy and personal, with enough room for items like photos, manuals, and headphones. Each astronaut even has their own window for gazing out into space. This thoughtful setup offers both privacy and a touch of home, which is crucial for maintaining mental health and good rest during long missions. It's clear that modern space stations are paying more attention to the comfort and well-being of their crews. This trend fits perfectly with the growing push toward the commercialization of space travel, where future visitors to orbit may include not just government astronauts, but also private researchers and even space tourists. China clearly wants its Taikonauts to feel as close to life on Earth as possible, which is why the Tiangong station features footholds mounted to the floor. These help astronauts stay in place while eating, posing for group photos, or even snapping a quick selfie in microgravity. Speaking of meals, it's reassuring to know that the crew can grow fresh lettuce and other vegetables on board, along with receiving regular shipments of fruit like apples. This goes a long way in addressing the vitamin deficiencies that often affect astronauts during long stays in space. And when it comes to dining, Tiangong takes a big leap forward. Freeze-dried or vacuum-sealed meals are no longer the dreaded routine they used to be, thanks to a microwave designed specifically for space. Traditional microwaves can't be used on the ISS due to their high power demands and safety risks. Instead, ISS astronauts rely on warmers that use heated water to slowly bring meals up to temperature. Chinese engineers, however, became the first to successfully develop a fully functional space microwave. It took them over a decade to perfect a design that's lightweight, energy efficient, and capable of surviving the intense vibrations of a Long March 5B rocket launch. The results speak for themselves. While astronauts on the ISS wait 20 to 30 minutes to heat their food, Taikonauts aboard Tiangong can prepare a full meal for three people in just seven minutes. Here's a fun question. Have you ever wondered what's on the menu for Chinese astronauts? Given the richness of Chinese cuisine, it's safe to say their meals are anything but boring. In fact, during a stay aboard Tiangong, the crew can choose from as many as 120 different dishes. We're talking about classics like shredded pork in garlic sauce, Kung Pao chicken, black pepper beef, and pickled cabbage with pork, just to name a few. Honestly, just listing them makes my mouth water. Does it do the same for you? Please comment below about your feelings. If you've never tried authentic Chinese food, you definitely should. It's an experience you won't regret. When the Tianzhou 2 cargo ship launched on May 29, 2021, it carried about 6.8 tons of supplies, including a wide variety of food and drinks. There were teas, juices, soups, and even coolers packed with fresh fruits and vegetables to keep everything crisp in orbit. The meals themselves are designed to be easy to handle in microgravity, solid, boneless, and bite-sized, 
while still catering to each astronaut's personal tastes. To make up for the reduced sense of taste in space, Taikonauts also bring along flavorful condiments like pork sauce and Sichuan pepper sauce to spice things up. Eating and sleeping are basic human needs, no matter where we live, even 400 kilometers above Earth. What's truly fascinating is how Chinese astronauts aboard Tiangong maintain a routine that closely mirrors life back home. Their workday usually begins at 8 a.m. Beijing time, with the afternoon shift starting around 2 p.m. Unless unexpected tasks arise, mornings are typically devoted to maintenance checks and equipment testing, while afternoons focus on research. The daily experiments cover a wide range of topics, from growing crops and studying human physiology in space to exploring materials, science, and deep space observation. All of this helps scientists learn more about how humans can live and work in space long term. By December 2024, Tiangong had already completed 181 scientific and applied research projects in orbit. Over the next 10 to 15 years, China plans to conduct more than 1,000 additional experiments aboard the station. As for their evenings, dinner is usually served around 6 p.m. and lasts about an hour. Afterward, the crew often tunes in to Xinwen Lianbo, China's most watched daily news program. The ground support team regularly transmits news broadcasts and updates to the Taikonauts, helping them stay connected with life and events back on Earth. Working out is one of the top priorities for astronauts in space, and the Taikonauts are no exception. They have access to specially designed workout equipment, including a bicycle and a treadmill. Exercise is part of their daily routine, and each astronaut follows a personalized fitness plan. Typically, they train at 60 to 80% of their maximum capacity, gradually increasing intensity over time to counter the effects of weightlessness on their muscles and bones. We've already covered what happens inside the station, so now let's step outside, literally, for spacewalks. Tiangong is equipped with three Chinese EVA suits, stored in the airlock of the Wentian module. The station also features two robotic arms, a 10-meter arm on the Tianhe core module and a smaller 5-meter arm on Wentian. These can link together to form a single 15-meter arm, giving astronauts impressive flexibility and reach. This combined arm rivals the 17-meter long Canadarm II used on the ISS and has already proven invaluable for assisting Taikonauts during spacewalks such as installing handrails between modules. Spacewalks on Tiangong usually last several hours and are crucial for tasks like installing debris shields, inspecting and repairing solar panels, maintaining external equipment, and mounting scientific instruments. The robotic arms play a key role in these missions, stabilizing astronauts, moving gear, and positioning them in hard-to-reach areas outside the station. China's ambition doesn't stop there. They are looking to expand their capabilities with new modules and spacecraft. The upgrades to Tiangong will come in a number of steps. The first would be to update the Chinese space station's Tianhe core module to be able to accept further modules. With this purpose, they try to upgrade the space station from its current T-shape to the future cross-shape or you may also call it the double T shape. This would allow China to send more space science experiment racks and large extravehicular experiments, and overall extend the scale of operations aboard Tiangong. Another upgrade is developing the renewable spaceship. The versatile spacecraft named Mengzhou will come in two variants, one for sending crew to the moon and another for Tiangong. With this spaceship, they can support three astronauts for the lunar missions and also the seven astronauts for the new space station missions.